basketball or a skateboard. But when he developed an attachment to the neighbor girl's high heels, it was a whole new ball game. I, I've been sort of relieved that Zach is such a jock because if he did more sort of traditionally feminine things that people would tie that to the fact that he has two dads. And it's probably just internalized homophobia. When stuff like that happens in public, sort of, I feel a little bit of shame. Up there, two of you, stay back. Attack the ball, attack the ball. Attack the ball, attack the ball. Come on, come on, get by the goal, Oscar, get by the goal. Good, good, good. Hey Oscar, do your friends ever ask you how come your dad and Gil live together? Yeah. What do you say? I say because they um because because they like each other and and all that kind of stuff. And what then? What do your friends say? They say. They saw all kinds of stuff, like, oh, I forgot what they say, but they say all kinds of stuff. I does, I does, two dads live together. Sometimes I feel like I'm alone and I'm the only person that has, that has something like that. Okay, major naive papers. I joined this thing on the internet. Uh, it's called Collage, Children of Lesbian and Gays. And I just get emails from everybody. So did you write an email? Yeah. What'd you say? I said, I'm nine years old and my dads are gay. Is there anyone else like me? I think the next few years are gonna be probably the more challenging years as she's getting into a place where, you know, the word fag is yelled at them, the playground with more frequency. But, you know, every kid's got something. What's your daddy like? How's he different from other daddies? He's white and I'm black. Trying to raise a black child in a white home, I have to raise him in the culture that I'm familiar with and that I'm comfortable with. I can't like celebrate Kwanzaa, you know. I mean, I, number one, I don't know anybody that does. I have to live my life in a manner that's comfortable to me too. In an ideal world. I would probably agree that same race adoptions work out best for our kids. You know, because especially adopted kids, you have a lot to deal with anyhow. But it's not an ideal world. You know, and the option for these kids was not to be adopted by a Mexican mother and an African American father, or, you know, and even an all black family or an all Hispanic family. I mean, they've been in the system for years. Daisy, the farm dog. And Mr. Goose. If my adoption with them didn't go through, then they were going to put them available as single kids and they wouldn't have been placed together at all. You look exactly like me. I come from a big family and we get together a lot. I thought it was important for them to always be able to look across the table and see someone who looked like them. At my family events, I was suddenly conscious of how much Zach stood out. This was all such a very new experience for us, too. Not, not that I was afraid of it, but I had to learn how to cope with it as well. It wasn't a hard process, but it was something I had never thought about before, that I was going to be the grandmother, the great-grandmother, right? <laughs> of a, a black child. It was only when I saw him that I began to love him too. 
when I told my family that we wanted to adopt a black child, one relative suggested that we get an Asian kid instead because they do better on tests. The rest were supportive, but they had no idea what it meant to grow up African American. Did they understand what we were getting into? Did I? What do you think about white gay men adopting African American kids? Well, I mean, I have mixed feelings about it. I think that a lot of these men believe that they can just raise African American kids in a colorblind way so that they don't really have to deal with race and as long as there's love, it shouldn't matter. Well, that's bullshit. I mean, the reality is, is that their child is going to be treated differentially in school settings. They're going to be feared by people who are walking down the street. I, I think there are a lot of white gay men who are not ready for that challenge. I wonder what will ultimately prove to be the biggest challenge for Zach. Will it be having two dads, or being adopted, or being a black man in a racist society? When I'm out in public with Zach, I've grown accustomed to the stares, but it's the questions that I hate. Is he your real son, people ask? I can teach Zachary the words he needs to confront people's ignorance, but I can't stop him from getting hurt. I really don't know how the fluidity, the changes in her life will affect Fanny. If anything, I sometimes worry that she may think that divorce is easy, that there isn't an emotional toll. So I was very reticent initially to introduce Fanny to somebody new. Who would like Manischewitz very sweet Concord grape wine? <laughs> it's tradition. Okay. You know, I certainly wouldn't choose to have Philip around okay. at this point in my life, but, you know, he's there and, and he's a great father for Fanny. I mean, ultimately, it comes down to, to Fanny and how she's doing, and she's completely surrounded by love. I found out about the judge's ruling by hearing a, an answering machine message from my chief lawyer in New York. Very shortly thereafter, we were just bombarded with, with calls from everyone in the, you know, every media agency in the country. First tonight at 5.30, Florida's law banning gays from adopting children is considered the toughest in the country. And today, a federal judge in Miami ruled that law is valid. Judge King ruled the state has a legitimate interest in allowing only heterosexual married couples to adopt children. It's a sharp blow to the hopes of Doug Houghton of Miami. He's a nurse who has been Oscar's legal guardian for more than five years and who went to... Well, I, I was really angry when I found out about it because... Uh, I felt like we really were, were kind of robbed of the opportunity to even get into court and, and say our piece. I don't care what the law say or anything else. There's only one way to do anything, that's the right way. And what could be more right than giving a child a chance with a person that's going to love them and take care of them? Okay, so here's our family, okay? Jesse and Ray are brothers, and they have the same mommy and the same daddy, and that's called their birth mommy and their birth daddy. So, unfortunately, Jesse and Ray got split up for a little bit. So Jesse went to live with what's called your foster mom. That's sweet. Makes sense? Okay. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Okay, so Jesse and Ray, Ray had a mommy and daddy who made them, and they couldn't take good care of them. So it's... You're right, because they took drugs. So, Jesse and Ray Ray came to live with me, and I became what's called their forever daddy. So that means that from now on, forever and ever, I'm going to be their daddy, and this is our family. 
Jesse came and woke me up one morning at about three in the morning. He goes, you know what, Daddy? I said, he goes, um, when I was little, I didn't have a family. <laughs> oh. Um. God. And he goes, um, so I was walking by. <laughs> This makes me sad. <clears throat> he said, so I just walked around the street by myself. And I went up to one house and I said, no, that's not my house. And I went to another door. I said, no, that's not my door. And he goes, and then, Daddy, I came up to your house. And it said, Kelly Wallace on the door. And I said, that's my house. And he goes, so I knocked on the door and you answered it. And I said, would you be my daddy? <clears throat> and I said, you know, honey, I'd love to be your dad. And he goes, so then I moved in with my brother, and now I have a family. <laughs>